Your goggles are in the Smithsonian. Yes. I think Eric's a sandbagger. You got all serious, like, man, that smile went away and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Big day. All right, so we're out here today, 7 11 a.m., playing at one of the most picturesque courses in Los Angeles with none other than Mr. James Worthy. Silky swing, deep voice, and no goggles today. How did you get into golf? Well, Eric, you know, golf is, uh, became more like a uh, fellowshipping, you know, event for me. Uh, when I retired from, from playing in the NBA, you know, you can't find that type of camaraderie and that type of fellowship. You know, so I think athletes, they, that's always a part of their, their life. So I find that golf like provides a lot of that. It's competitive, trash talking over a beer with, with friends that, you, that you're with for like at least four hours. You can't really bring your sport into golf. There's not much I can bring from basketball uh, to golf, other than a free throw maybe yeah. where everything is silent and quiet and you get a chance to go through uh, some type of ritual. Other than that, it's spontaneous, it's reaction. The ball is moving. Uh, in golf, the ball is just sitting there and it's, it's already dead. You know, it's just sitting there and we still try to kill it. So. How you transfer what you have to do in golf from any other sport is totally different. And I think that is the true challenge uh, for most athletes who are used to being coached and told what to do. And maybe after one or two times, they get it. Golf is not like that. Golf seems to be really the only game that basically professional athletes from almost any type of game pick up and they don't just pick it up they 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 go crazy with it you know yeah. what i mean like they get the bug yeah I, th I think most most athletes especially those who perfect their professional level and reach a lot of goals in their prospective sports they're they're very used to the discipline and the work ethic and they always know that if they work, work, work hard enough, that they'll get it. The Wayne Gretzky's, you know, uh, the Ray Allen's, the Steph Curry's, all, all the athletes that, that have played golf. It doesn't matter how hard you work, it does. It, it does take hard work. You can't master this game. And I think that's what we're used to doing. We're used to mastering uh, the game. Get there. Oh. Oh. So okay, so we're at the part of the golf here now, James, where I have to ask you: Do you do you typically like to gamble on the course? What's the game you play with your? I do. Uh, I have a one game a week uh, on Sundays where we play uh, six, six, and six, where we each partner up with 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 each player, and uh, yeah, six holes. And uh, I have another game where we play skins, uh, uh, front, back, and overall, and skins. So. But I don't get in the high numbers. I keep it reasonable. But should, should we play a match right now? Sure. Well, I, what's what do you want to play? Uh, I, normally, uh, par five dollar skin. Okay. Okay. Great. Let's do it. All right. I think I I'm honestly not the. I probably won't even understand that game. I might need help. Par five dollar skins. What does that mean? <laughs> you're playing skins and you have to qualify them with the par. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll pick you along. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't know all the rules either. I don't know. Follow them with, with other I'll guys. Score. Like I'm not the scorekeeper. I just kind of know we're playing for. And now it's about now it's about to get real. Our games are going to switch up a little bit here. I'm, I'm about to play worse. James about to play better. He's just slow. James just rope a doping me here. He's going to start. Okay. You're the one that's been sandbagging all day. <laughs> Yeah. Ball. 
That is in position A, right, Pilon? Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Did it straight? Serious, like. You got all serious, like, man. That smile went away and everything. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually, I think that's on the right tier, Jim. might be a seven in your bio, but you're a 10 in real life. I'm a double, I'm a double digit in real life and I'm playing out of my mind with James. James, we could, we could make a good team. Yeah, I mean, you know, my strokes, your game. <laughs> That'd be the name of my book. <laughs> LA in the late eighties, early nineties. That must have been the time. Uh, I would say the eighties were Man, a lot of things were moving. Music was moving differently, you know. Uh, Showtime was born with, uh, you know, Magic coming to LA and Pat Riley becoming the coach. And Hollywood, man, it was, it was Eddie Murphy, movies at the box office, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the 80s. I have to say it was the hype of uh, just excitement and a lot of things going on. Do you have any keepsakes from your career that you keep in the house? I don't, you know, I don't have like a, a trophy case or anything. I just never really got into it. But I have, you know, I have my, my MVP trophies, my rings. My Hall of Fame stuff, you know, there, there are some, you know, my top 50, there are some personal stuff to that. What about goggles? Uh, I do have some goggles, yeah. Uh, actually, the uh, Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. was doing a, a tribute to artifacts, like sports artifacts. Or, and so I sent them a pair of my goggles uh, back in the 90s. Your goggles are in the Smithsonian. Yes. That is the coolest thing ever, yes, man. Yes, they are. Uh, you know, they, they were on display, I think, for a couple of years, and they still may be. I don't know if they rotate them out and put other new stuff in, but they're still there. They don't send them back. <laughs> goggles are gone. Yeah. Dude, that is awesome. Cool. Were you one of the early goggle adopters? Kareem was the first. Uh, you know, I only wore them because of Kareem. Uh, I was poked in the eye, really devastating, like twice. The first time I recovered, the second time it was, it was, it was devastating. I had to wear a patch and so when I came back to play, because it all happens because of my style of my game, I drive to the cup and I'm in there amongst a lot of arms and hands and they're slapping at the ball. and. That's how I got hit the first time. So Kareem noticed that I wasn't as aggressive. And he knew from his prior eye injuries that he was the same way. So he picked up on it and said, I know what, what's going on. And he said, you should try these. So that's how it kind of became, uh, you know, famous for me was uh, through injury and through the encouragement of a teammate. But goggles no more. Nobody wears goggles now. Uh, no, you know, we, we, we tried to start a big campaign. I got it. 
the goggles come out, you're the spokesperson, and they say, it's worthy it. Yeah. <laughs> like your eyes are worthy it? It's, it's worthy it, that's right. Uh, I don't know, man, I think that could work. Nah, we, we tried. <laughs> nah, we it's tried. not gonna work. All right, so here's the deal. I'm four under on the eighth green, and I have like a, I don't know, nine He's footer coming. for 30. A little more. James and I are playing five dollar skins, Mars. I don't really know what it is, but either way, four hundred. This is like this starts to get into personal best territory. What's it, what's the best you've ever had, James, on the golf course? Uh, I shot a seventy nine once. Okay. But I usually average eighty eight. You know. Okay. Nope. I didn't move at all. The blood, Mr. Lang, is still one up. I picture myself on the range. Don't be afraid of the shot. Come on, Eric. Breathe it out. Breathe it out. <laughs> Exhale. Yeah, I got a little fear. You know what? You have you know a what? safety blanket the, to the right. This ball has already landed. There is, there is no world where. All right, so we're on nine. I had uh, 160 into a par five, roasted the drive, and then, yeah, just kind of got a little. Extra with the seven iron. Went long, pulled it, just you know. Did it again. Bilo likes it. Get away with it. That is perfect. I think Eric's a sandbagger because he started out saying that you know he's just a. Uh, a social golfer. And then I find out he's a freaking seven handicap. And what he really does is he witnessed my game and saw that I was a little shabby. And then he started this this betting match, which we're in right now. He's one up. So I've been able to push him a couple holes. So we'll see what happens here. I, I think I stroke here. Rick's going to eat a lot of that speed. And it's a good maybe at least four or five feet of break. Okay, left to right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and just a nice level okay. putt. Five and a five, correct? Five and a five. So now we're all square. All right, so we're back to all square here. Fourth hole, this is the 10th hole on the course. I'm starting to get a little, he, he's getting loose and I'm getting tight. That's a problem. He, he you, you, you thrive on like pressure. You must. I think so. Uh, pressure usually brings out, at least in my sport, <laughs> it did. Uh, the higher the stakes, you know, which is kind of why Chick Hearn gave me that that nickname, Big Game, because it, it always rose in the in the playoff. So, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, should be able to. I have this friend. He's a caddy. I just met him here, young guy, and he's a caddy. And he wants to be a stand-up comedian, you know, like that. And he gives us jokes, jokes. Joke. Hey, I said, I told him, hey. You can, I'll give you some lines of jokes. I mean, you can use me. Tell them that you got a friend who loves to fight his cocks. 
to, <laughs> as long as you can say that on the stage, it's, I mean, you know, and in the Philippines, you can say, men love to fight their cocks. Oh! Yeah. Oh, dude, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> How do you think Eric and James are playing? Eric's a pretty good player. Eric's pretty good. Do you think does James has a chance in the match? How old are you, Eric? Uh, 40. So you got 20 years on you. It, yeah. You know, James, if, if uh, Eric misses a green or a fairway, he might. And, and James, you know, he gets a shot. He's got a shot. Five shots is plenty. As long as you know, you can put it in the, you can put the ball in the way it should be played, you know, with the handicap, he might win. But Eric's good, pretty consistent. We can see that drive there he hit. Yeah. That was like 300 yard drive. I mean, uh, he over hit it with a seven iron. He had 160 in. He worked a long par five up the hill. Go! Yeah. James got a putt to win this hole. <sighs> All right, this is the push. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. Yo, there's nothing like the post-divorce apartment. Yeah, it, it is was, a it was dark fun. moment. It was fun. It yeah, we, fun we had, there was a therapist that came by. <laughs> what you was know? I doing wrong? There was a couple of therapists that came by a week, and then we had a little therapist. Yeah, I mean, it was like thirty of us house? in there. It was like oh. thirty of us, and now just come by the pool, and we just sit around, and drink beer, and tell a yeah. bunch of lies. And... I didn't do the divorce right, I guess. Yeah, you know, it's kind of broke, so that's a no. divorce was healthy. It was a good thing. Yeah. I got married, I was 22, so it was oh, yeah? way, way too young. That's early. We laugh about it, yeah. Yeah, your friends? Oh, you have yeah. uh, kids together? Yeah. Yeah. All right, dare I say it. Ace Cam's live here. 196 iron, 12th hole. Biggest screen in Los Angeles. But we want the hole. Guys coming from my pension plan money. <laughs> That's for sure. Don't mess with my retired money, man. Hey, take it. You're going for my kids. Ah, 
Oh, no, I didn't get it over there, no. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't coachable on that one. Think about it. Just be about it. You know, you, you have your ritual. Tell yourself what you what you've done and what you can do going forward. You got five birdies today, kicking my ass. So that's what you tell yourself. No mercy. No mercy. No mercy. All right, let's finish. Finish the job, man. <laughs> Come on, stay away from my door. Eric, I believe, is currently four or five under, which means he's shooting, par playing a par 70 today out here. Um, he has the potential to go low 60s, which I think would be so out of his ballpark. We're gonna, we're gonna be, might be blowing a lot of minds today. I think we're gonna press through here. I mean, he's. He's, I think he's in the zone. As much as he wants to pretend he's not in the zone, he's pretty locked in. It's a beautiful morning out here. Um, it's hard to see this go horribly wrong, but we'll see. The destiny of the ball has already been written and just put it on the path. Yeah, whatever it is. You know, it just is. Like, it's not, you know? I don't, I, I only get in the way. <laughs> James, do you believe in, uh, do you believe in fate? Like people are responsible for their own fate? Yeah, like, well, like I just started thinking about it this way. So your life is already written out and you don't have to worry about anything. It's, it is, it is taking you through exactly where you're supposed to be at each moment. Yeah, I do believe in fate. I believe, you know, uh, I believe the things that you're experiencing in life are life lessons. And a, a lot of times they're, not good and sometimes you have to deal with it and reconcile with it so yeah i do believe yeah. that things happen for a reason and if you are aware of it and grasp it then you can learn from it he's human yeah
from where wow. you were. Wow. I literally, I put an idiot mark on my driver. Oh! Bar! Oh my god, I'm gonna kill somebody. So, minor hiccup. Eric made a double bogey. Um, but, excellent comeback birdie on the next hole. Um, but we're still on pace for record round here. Report back later. We're in the awkward place of being four under on the 16th, just off the green here. The lowest I've ever been is 74, two over. So the question is, do I have six bogeys in me? No, because there's only two and a half holes left. So do I have two doubles? Do I have three doubles in me? Honestly, no, I don't. We got a par five coming up. A lot of opportunities to cover up for a mistake. And I got a good feeling about this up and down. That's crazy. Well, that's the puzzle with golf is, is you know, you, you, you know, there's no escaping it. You know what I mean? Like the fact that I made two birdies in a row is pretty wild. Right. You know? Yeah. That was pretty wild. First four holes, birdie, par, birdie, birdie. What? Wow, he did. He did it. Oh, Putt to win the match. He missed. Let's think of something I, really. I will, I will say, James. Let's think of something really like gross. Like, what? What are you afraid of? Rats? Oh, spiders? Shit. You know, what I'm really afraid of is uh, snakes. Snakes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Quite what? Because the loser has to do something with snakes? No, no. I just just trying to put a. Oh, a, you're trying a, to put a, a horror. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. But I, I see that's impossible, the way your <laughs> mind works. Just get this one close and we'll be good. Get it close. It's uh, just on the left edge, right? It's a cup out right. What? <laughs> this fucking guy. Oh, I just stepped it out with a little hey, bit early. That was a great match, Pleasure, big man. man. I appreciate it. No, no, it was fun. Thank I had a good you. time. Two more for fun. All right. Match over. Now we just have fun. Uh oh, slipped off of that one. James, you remember uh, the movie Die Hard? I do. That's that building. The Sakanaki building. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Pilo, you see me putt. Am I gonna make this one? I don't know. 50-50. 50-50? He's like, I'm not putting any odds on. Not much, like, right? No. Alright, so after two pars, 16 and 17, we're on the 18th tee. And we're yeah. currently still four under. Yeah. I'm feels weird to say it. Uh -huh. Feels very <laughs> weird. Like it's like it's like I feel like I'm cheating. I feel like I don't know. 18th hole, we're going back to our safe shot, little cut. got all the camera. I'll carry the backpack because this has all the footage. James, we can't lose this footage, man. 
No, you can't you can't lose this footage. This is uh very huge. What should we title the video? Um oh. <laughs> A day with James? A day, I like that. One of your quotes made me laugh. I was better than Michael Jordan for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was. How about that? I kind of deserve one of those. We can still make a birdie. No pictures on the scorecard, remember? Slightly in my head, just a tad in my head. Can you see? There's like I'm, there's like a blue aura around my head. That's the thoughts, the desires, and the emotions of 10 years of golf of wanting to break par and never really even coming close. Now here we are. So you mean to say you and I have a bond now? You, and I, <laughs> we have a very serious bond. Me, you, James, Landon, and Simon need to only play golf together for the rest of our lives. This is, a, this is a holy moment. In the channels of golf, you know, people are like, what's on your bucket list, Eric? What do you want? You know, you've played Augusta, played the old course, you played Pebble, played Terry Eady. Nah, what's on my bucket list is seeing the Northern Lights in Alaska with a woman, playing the old course in reverse, and breaking par. Best food in the city. Big day. Tiger bogey at 18 at the Masters, right? No, 68 with a three putt. It's a part seven today. Couldn't beat that plate as a four. Oh, yeah. and it's normally a 71. James, on, brother, thank you, man. Pleasure, man. I really good. Man, enjoyed it. That's thank all. you, James. My pleasure, man. Four, five, six. So, a bogey. So four, so we got that was a 67. 67. So I did shoot his, uh, his age. Yeah. Pilo, <laughs> you shot your age. The par 70 today. Right on, bro. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. All right, guys. Man, that was fun. That was fun.